Lately, I've been feeling like giving up or letting go. <clears throat> because I've accepted everything in life, and by acceptance, I don't mean like, OK, I feel this way, so good. No, my acceptance comes beyond emotion, beyond the mind. There is resistance in my mind and my body, but not in me. Now, lately, I have been feeling like giving up. The problem is because there is a great distance between my mind and I. I don't really know what to do, even though I say I have accepted. I can feel a clinging to a specific emotion or thought. It's strange. I know I can, I can do nothing. It's not that I can it's not that I do nothing, it's just that I be. I watched it all happen. Yet, if my mind wants to surrender, what is it waiting for? I just sit and watch this happen. What do I do? Nothing. No. What do I do? Nothing is question mark there, you see. So I feel like giving up a part of me, yet I can't do anything. I don't know how to let go, and because I know, I don't know how to let go, and because I know that I have no control over anything, and letting go is not something I can do. Is there something I can do? <laughs> and this is from Robert in Australia, I think. I have accepted everything in life, and by acceptance I don't mean like it's just fine, I feel, I feel good. No, my acceptance comes beyond emotion, beyond the mind. There is resistance in my body and mind, but not in me. If it let her finish there, it's finished. Why not finish there? But it goes on, you see. Now, lately, I've been feeling like giving up. Uh, the problem is because there is a great distance between my mind and I. But if you know the difference between your mind and yourself, where could the problem come? It has to come either from the, from the mind or from the eye. If it comes from the eye, then the eye is also in the mind. <clears throat> I don't really know what to do. You see, these questions are coming, you see. Well, I don't know what to do. You see, this is, again, it's coming from an emotion, it's coming from some feeling. Why, why to do? Something, no, I don't know what to do. So this question is coming. No? Hmm? Sometimes questions come. We don't have to be afraid of them. And they are triggering some contemplation. You, know, you have to ponder over them, not just a thought come and you are mis immediately dismiss. No, because without thought, uh, how, how would you contemplate? They provoke a contemplation at best. No? To, uh, just upstairs, I was up there just a few. Maybe a one, you know, half an hour ago or whatever, I was up in my room and I was lying there. Janaki was massaging my foot, and I had this thought: "No, something come." I said, "Of what use am I?" It came like this: "What, what, what, what is the value of me? <laughs> what, what am I? Well, who am I? What am I doing here? What value is this?" Hmm? And it triggered a kind of contemplation that's running. But also, this, this, this contemplation is watch, being watched. It's going on. And then, ultimately, what I said about it, that this, this is just a form of love. A love to contemplate itself, or something like that. Because what are, even what value is it to do this? You see? What is the necessity? And for whom? You see? So sometimes, just these contemplations are running, but don't add any emotional fuel to it, because it is like somehow you know, it's like the God mind wants to play, and it's it's doing this thing and it's doing. This. Don't interfere. Just let it play, and and it's speaking. I do this, and I see. This. But behind this is a space that allows this play to happen and to be perceived. But this space is untouched. No one has ever touched it. No one can claim it. You see. Even to be someone is already it's some some assist. the idea for somebody takes birth in it also and is perceived in it. Who can touch this one? You see? And yet, is no distance. Uh, 
so the problem is 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 there is uh, is is because there is a great distance between my mind and I. I don't really know what what to do. Again, you see, you have not caught. You know, it's still running. You know, I. The eye is developing, and now I some kind of subtle complex. You see, I don't know what to do, even though I say I I I have accepted. I can feel a cling to a specific emotion, thought, and it's strange. You see, already is there still something running? Is something running? The behindness you are not reporting yet from the behindness. You see. Mm-hmm. Now I know I can do nothing. It's not that I do nothing. It's just that I be or I am. That's okay. I watch it all happen. If you watch something happen, you're not involved in it emotionally or psychologically or something. Then it passes like cloud pass and everything. You want to tell me about the clouds that passed this morning? How one was big and was shaped like a buffalo or something? No, it is gone. No interest is there. Now the present cloud is here. Do we have interest in this? No, no, nothing. If you have no interest in something, it doesn't register that it even occur. Hmm? Your eyes are open from the time waking state happens. Eyes are open. The senses are open. Uh, does it mean that the mind is necessarily shopping through the senses to 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 bring home some information? Not necessarily. Hmm? What is it that gets sieved out and registered as significant, you know, occurrences? They are made up. There's something. Something says, "Ah, this is important." And click, click, save. Otherwise, what's happening? Perceiving is happening, huh? but registration not necessarily. And this is the joy and the freedom of the beingness, because it's not captured by the functioning of perception. Yeah? And this is how the sage is also perceiving. No? They are not one of the three monkeys. They don't have to close their eyes and ears and what. They don't have to do this. Let everything happen. But they themselves know that they are not happening. And even what is happening, is it happening or not happening? Well, it is you who determine it, whether something happens or not. The thing in itself cannot tell you it happened. It is you who must say it happened. Just like the body doesn't tell you, my name is George. It doesn't do it. It is you who said the body is George. You see, so we have to just be clear, and it comes back down to what is your position in all of this? Are you merely an object like other objects in the stream of objects passing in the consciousness? Or are you in front of the consciousness or behind the consciousness? Or both? You see, these things are small little contemplations, but they are going they are like uh, they are the impact of them at uh, somehow Burning the ropes, the binding ropes of the mind. You see, your contemplations will burn them. I know I, I can do nothing. It's not that I do nothing. It's just that I be, I am. You see, I watch it all happen. Yet, if my mind wants to surrender, what is it waiting for? And then you see, when you come to that place of observing, you see that the mind itself is phenomenal. Whether it wants to surrender or not is not your business anymore. <laughs> what, what, what is the mind about? It's just another thought. Today it surrenders. Oh, hallelujah! <laughs> Tomorrow it's again climbing a tree again. You see. So why wait for the thing? It's it's an unreliable thing. Why put so much trust in that mind? It's like opening a, a, a shop selling bananas and putting a monkey as your manager. <laughs> there. Where's your, what is going to be your profit? And so it's not that somehow you know, the thing that says, yes, I surrender, has any power to surrender at all. You see? So something is earlier than surrender. You see? And then when you see this, even the function or the act of surrender, which from another perspective might seem to be a very holy thing, from the highest position, it's just another concept, not even worth bothering about. I'm careful, not I'm careful without even the intention to be careful about it, because the only way that these things can be spoken is in is in a, some environment where they are receptive on some level. If it's not energetically receptive, my words won't come. I know that because I don't have a desire to speak them, apart from you who have some openness for them. 
If my mind wants to surrender, what is waiting? What is it waiting for? I just sit and watch this happen. What do I do? High is what? What do I do? You must now confirm your I as what is your I. You must establish your identity. When you speak now as I, as what are you speaking? Because then you are making a distinction between your mind and you. But this I is wondering something. I just sit and watch it happen. What do I do? Nothing. Is it? You know, he say, "What do I do? Nothing." No, he says, "What do I do? Nothing." His question, even you see, this chai that uh, is deliberating also is also combined with the mind also, because for the one who has merged uh, the consciousness in his own source, what question doubt they're going to entertain even? What ju- what job do they have? What thing to accomplish even? You see, and these are not just flirtatious uh, spiritual cliches. It's, it's something. It's, it's very simple. You're, compl- you're at complete rest. You're out of that paradigm completely. You see. Hmm. I feel like giving up a part of me, yet I can't. I can't do not. I can't do anything. You see. So there is something. It, something is like this a little bit. No, this movement. Something is saying, I want to give up part of me, and then another another side is saying, but I can do nothing. But uh, there is a third factor, which is not a third. It is the soul factor, you see, and that is not in this predicament at all. It is not caught in the bubble of that play. It has no value to the one who has value. The one who has value is the ego mind, you see. Yeah, it has an account. So the, the supreme has no value for him. Because it's not going anywhere, it's not accomplishing anything. The supreme cannot be successful, because it cannot fail. It doesn't all these things. It's out of that. It's out of that uh, dictionary. I don't know how to get, how to let go, and because I know that I have no control over anything, and letting go is not is not something I can do. Is there something I can do? So this letter is this letter is begging for some inquiry, you see? Just a little bit directing, you see, but what are you speaking? You see? Just tuck tuck tuck, it can be finished. You see, if someone who writes like this, who is very much on the verge of a kind of complex form of thinking, you don't need more too much thinking. Huh? Just a little twist of attention. This boom. What is this? Catch you out, you see? And the whole of this crumble, you see? If they are open for it. Sometimes we are in this state and we are still messing about. We are still interested in, in this phase. I see people like that. They present it like it's a predicament, but they are enjoying. They are in it still. Yeah, what do I do? I don't know what I do. And uh, in some part of the mind is telling them that, but they are beyond this. They say, I'm beyond all of this. It's just my kind of game, which I want to play with you, to see if you are convinced with my game. Yeah, But actually, I can be out of it whenever I want. But actually, they can't. It's not good to get so... Um, to mess about in these things. I watched one program one time. I'm not accusing. This is not an accusing, but I'm just reminded of this. Uh, one program one time. It was one man. He had taken a few drugs in his day, but now he had become a, a reporter. And uh, he wanted to make a, a kind of documentary. He wanted to do an experiment, and he wanted to be the, his own guinea pig. He wanted to be the one that is taking part in the experiment. And the experiment was that he was taking a film crew, the BBC, and he was going to go and take certain kind of drugs. And he was going to report about his experiences about these drugs. So they gave him some money, so he'd be careful. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah. So he goes off with the crew, and he goes off, and he started to take the drugs. And then he would take some smoke. He would say, yeah, 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 actually, it's really... Amazing, because before my mind was clear, but now I can see a little bit some blurring. A little blurring is going on, but I'm not seeing any angels, I'm not seeing anything like this. No, 
just a little bit uh, like this, and he's reporting. Seem very objective, and like this, and he goes on a bit more, and he's taking different things, no, and then uh, somehow he's getting more and more in it, <laughs> and he's talking. Yeah, you know, it's like uh, yeah, I can feel, I can feel it's this movement inside. Heart is racing a bit and stuff. You know, in my mind, I can see the mind is moving like this, and you know. But uh, yeah, you know, this is strong. It's 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 getting more strong. Also, I can feel it's getting more strong. And a little bit down the road, he's completely gone. <laughs> he's gone. You no, know? he loses this. His his discernment has gone. Something is gone. And then he's trying to you know to talk, and he's slurring. <laughs> Yeah, well, I know I'm slurring, but uh, okay. And then even at one point, they say some. One of the guys from the team says, I, "Listen, I, I think you, you, you can stop. You know, we don't have to do this." Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. But yeah, just like this. Then later, he said, "Oh, excuse me, I just had to go back to the toilet." And you know, one of the guys was smart. You know, he went back in the toilet because he had some drugs stashed in the toilet. <laughs> you see. And he's going there. So I was just, oh, I just got to go to look quickly. And he's inside there, and the guy is coming. You know, Johnny, Johnny. I know what his name is. Bang, 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 bang. What, come, what are we doing in there, man? No, no, I'm coming, coming. Inside, he's already gone. You have to get rid of this snake. Don't fall in love with his skin. Think, oh my God, he's so beautiful. I keep him a bit longer, you know. Just keep him in the corner. Yeah. Or the snake is leaving. The snake is leaving. His head is in the garden, but his tail is still in the room. <laughs> he has to come out completely. And this is your this is your sadhana. No? Something is moving. You start to celebrate too early. Just finish. Finish it off. Or maybe there is some subtle. Subtle uh, defensiveness around, or retaining some aspect of the self. There's maybe some fear that if I let go completely, I'm going to just be lost in some black hole or something. And these things, then you do need a teacher or someone who has gone before to give you a first a visual evidence that it is possible. And maybe you don't even believe that. You must be in the company for a while, and then somehow, you know, they help you to to see. Because the one who has gone through is just like a clear mirror, and so whatever nonsense you're keeping, if you even if it's secret, some kind of blind spot, it will keep showing up. And then you either run or you stay, and you get over it. You see.